Welcome to William B. I. Adobe State of Store Park. One thing that we like to do here is to share fables with our friends. A fable is a special story that has a moral that we can learn and then apply to our lives. Listen for the moral as you listen to the story. My name is Jennifer Pooley. Come sit by the hearth with me. Today, I'm going to share one of Aesop's fables, and it's called The Dog and the Wolf. The dog and the wolf were out one day, and the gaunt wolf was almost dead with hunger when he happened to meet a house dog who was passing by. <coughs> Ah, good morning, cousin dog. Ah, cousin wolf, I hardly recognize you. You're so thin. I'll say. It's getting really hard to find food in this forest. Ah, your irregular life will be the death of you. Why do you not work steadily as I do and get your food regularly given to you? Well, I would have no objection if I could get a place to do that. Uh, I, I can easily arrange that. Come with me to my master and you shall share in my work. Really? Oh, lead the way! So the wolf and the dog went towards the town together. By thunder, you really live in this part of town? <laughs> yes, indeed. Wow, this is prime real estate. I never knew you were such a rich dog. Uh, well, I wouldn't call myself rich, but I'm well enough off. Well, here we are. Home sweet home. You you actually live in a house? Yes, indeed. That's why they call it a dog house. My lands. I always have to sleep outside with the fleas and the ticks. But this cuts quite a shine. And this is just my summer home. In the winter, I get to sleep inside, next to the fireplace. Oh, I think I'm going to like living in Dogsville. See. You about ready for some dinner? I think we can find some roadkill around here somewhere. No, no, no. You don't have to hunt down your own dinner. That's what this dish is for. My master puts food in it and water in the other one. You're pulling one of my legs, right? Nope. I get three squares a day, plus a bone to chew on. Wow. I never knew it was so luxurious living in town, or I would have been here dog years ago. Say, cousin, could I ask you something? Why is the hair worn away on your neck? Oh, that's nothing. That's just where they put the collar on me at night. It chafes a bit, but you get used to it. Collar? What collar? You know, to keep me chained up. Ah, chained? You, you, you mean like a prisoner? Well, that's one way to look at it. I look at it as a trade-off, you know, for how well they take care of me. Oh, that's a trade-off I'm not willing to make. I don't need to be taken care of. And I have seen quite enough. This is no life for me. I'm much happier being a, a lone wolf. So the wolf promptly headed back to the forest. And that's the story of the dog and the wolf. What do you think the moral of that story is? Let's ask Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf, will you tell us the moral of the story? Nothing is more valuable than one's freedom. Thank you for sharing that lesson with us. And thank you for teaching us that story. I appreciate you being here with me today. And I hope you enjoyed the story too.